Hey everyone, I'm Jenny. And I'm Andrew. And we've been on the road for 16 months and about 14,000 miles. We are taking a day off in Norway today, so we decided it would be a good time to do an in-depth look at our around the world touring bikes. We built these bikes to be as durable and low maintenance as possible. And we also wanted them to be versatile, equally capable on the road and on rough gravel. Both of our frames are 2020 Surly Ogres, and the nice thing about these frames is that you can go from 29 by 2 inch tires on the skinny end and 29 by 2.6 tires on the wide end. So we can easily transition between kind of a more road setup, which is what we have now, to more of a bikepacking setup when we want to do rougher gravel roads um, like we plan to in the Americas later on. The wheel set is a really crucial part of any bike touring setup. So for our front wheel, we have Ride Andra 40 rims with a 36 spoke Son 28 Dynamo hub. Our front brake is a 200 millimeter Avid BB7 mechanical disc brake. We decided on mechanical disc brakes over rim brakes or hydraulic brakes because they're a good compromise between power and ease of maintenance. Hydraulic brakes have a lot of stopping power, but they need hydraulic fluid to function. Our brakes have a similar amount of power, but only rely on a cable that can be sourced at any bike shop in the world. We've toured extensively on rim brakes, and we found them unreliable in the rain with heavily loaded touring bikes. In the rear, we're running a roll-off internally geared hub with a 160 millimeter Avid BB7 brake. So instead of running a derailleur and cassette based system, the roll off shifts internally and is basically maintenance free. You have to change the oil in the roll off every 5,000 kilometers or 3,100 miles. But other than that, the shifting is pretty much flawless and you don't have to worry about breaking a derailleur or making any adjustments like that. Also, since the chain is basically in a single speed configuration, the chains last a lot longer than they do with a derailleur. Another advantage of the roll-off is that the single speed style chain setup is less likely to get clogged with mud than a derailleur is. There are some disadvantages to using internally geared hubs such as the roll-off. While they're known for being very reliable, if something does go wrong with the hub, we would need to ship it to Germany for repairs. This would be costly and could put our bikes out of commission for weeks or even months. In the end, we decided that the benefits of the roll-off outweighed the risks, but there are definitely some good arguments to be made for using components that could be replaced anywhere in the world. We've got Sugino XD600 cranks with a 34 tooth Surly chain ring and a Shimano square taper bottom bracket. We've put 15,000 miles on the chain ring and we're planning to flip it soon. We're using KMC E1 chains and we get about 7,000 miles out of them. We have a 16 tooth roll off sprocket giving us a very low gear ratio for pedaling slowly uphill. The bearings on the original pedals I had on this bike gave out when we were in Albania. So this was the best pair that we could find at a bike shop. They are Crank Brothers composite pedals and so far they've been working great. Andrew's using Shimano Saint pedals and they've lasted the whole trip. We started out the trip with Schwalbe Marathon Mondials and we got about 13,000 miles out of them. And recently we switched to the Schwalbe GT365s because we couldn't find Mondials in stock anywhere. And we've put about a thousand miles on these so far. We have Jones H-Bar handlebars with Ergon grips that help a lot with wrist pain and numbness. And then we have the Sinewave Cycles beacon as our headlamp that is plugged into the dynamo. It has a light switch here and then a USB charger and also a plug that you can plug into an external battery if you're going like really slow uphill um, so you still have a light if you're not generating electricity. The only downside is that the beam is basically shaped like a flashlight which is technically illegal in Germany. 
Our Dynamo setup allows us to slowly charge a power bank or our phones while riding. In order to get a decent amount of power from the hub, we need to be going about 12 miles or 20 kilometers per hour. In hilly terrain, the Dynamo generates no power while ascending because of the low speed, and descending a hill happens too quickly to allow for a sustained amount of charging time. The Dynamo works best on flat terrain, where you can maintain a moderate rate of speed for an extended period of time. It's tough to calculate how much power we get from our dynamos, but at best it's less than 20 to 30% charge on our phones per day. To supplement the dynamo, we each carry roughly 30,000 milliamp hours of power banks, enough to charge our phones for about 8 to 10 days of wild camping. We have Avid brake levers, a little bell, my mascot, Baby Yoda, and here we have the Revelate Egress Pocket for small electronics when it starts raining, so it's waterproof. This is our phone mount. It's just a generic one off of Amazon, but it's been really reliable despite it being pretty cheap. This is the mount for my Garmin bike computer, and this is our roll-off shifter over here. This is a Rockgeist feed bag. You can fit a Nalgene or some snacks in there. And then I have an Oveja Negra top two bag. And this is my water bladder hose that goes into the Rogue Panda frame bag. So I have an MSR four liter dromedary bag in there along with the tent poles and some spare tubes. This frame bag is cut specifically for the Surly Ogre, so it fits in there really nicely. It's got this zipper pocket where I store some sunscreen and bike tools. It is definitely not waterproof, so this pocket does fill up with water, which is kind of annoying, but it's still a nice bag overall. My front rack is a Tubus Duo. We have Planet Bike aluminum fenders. They've worked really well overall, but the one downside is that we have to completely take off the rear fender if we need to take our back wheel off if we get a flat or have to do other maintenance. I have a Whiskey carbon seat post and a Terry Butterfly Century saddle. I've used this saddle for over 30,000 kilometers and it's been amazing overall. Sometimes I do still get saddle pain, but it's definitely the most comfortable saddle that I've ever used. Andrew recently switched to a Ergon SMC core from the Brooks B17 and so far he's really liking it. Our front panniers are Bedrock Bags Hermosa panniers. And we got them because they're really light and they also have a Velcro attachment system in the back. So we thought that they would rattle less than um, Ortlieb panniers. And we really don't recommend these panniers too highly because they're not waterproof at all. So if you're in a heavy downpour, you wind up with a puddle of water at the bottom of these bags and it's really not fun. Our rear panniers are the Ortlieb Backroller Plus, which is made of a Cordura fabric, which is lighter than the PVC. And we've used these for seven years and over 30,000 kilometers, and they're still pretty waterproof. Mine has a hole in the bottom, I think, so it does let some water in, but overall they've been incredible. This is the attachment system for the Ortlieb rear panniers. We added the second hook on the bottom to just help them stay on a little bit better on gravel roads. And it looks like they would be subject to braking, but they're actually like crazy strong. We've taken them on a bunch of gravel roads and haven't had anything break yet. Mm -hmm. 